Hey guys, uh, this is Narrow Tire Boxers here. I'm making this video for OS. Um, this video is basically, it's a long one just so that everybody can kind of see some of the changes, benefits to the the contract system in uh, in the show 19. So I've, I've left in a lot of detail. You guys can skip forward, um, pause wherever you want to kind of see what the numbers are. I'm showing you, for example, Mookie Betts's updated uh, contract value here along with JD Martinez, David Price. So there's real life contracts on here already um, just to give some idea of what the baseline is. This is using the most recent uh, roster update for for the show. Um, I would also say to, to everybody, I, I had an issue connecting to the internet the first time I loaded it up and there was a there was actually a glitch with morale uh, where none of the uh, the role based morale was malfunctioning so players were only getting the status of uh, bullpen bench or minors even though they were an ace or a star or starter everyday player whatever it was uh, but that seems to have fixed itself once I reloaded the game and connected to the internet so if you're having that problem uh, public service announcement, try rebooting and make sure that you actually connect uh, You connect to the show online as soon as it logs you in. Uh, because I tried to connect to Diamond Dynasty during my first login, everything worked fine, but that didn't really update the, the roster. So, um, I'm not going to talk for this whole video guys, but uh, just to give you an idea of what to look for. So I've simmed about five years, not about, I've simmed five years. Um, you can see here, if I click on Chris Sale, it looks like if I had to make an offer to him, the numbers sort of seem right. He's looking for $30 million a year on average, uh, which makes sense. That's sort of what I would expect him to be, to be looking for as a 31-year-old 98 overall player. Maybe a little bit more. Paul Goldschmidt, I don't know, $18.4 million uh, as an average annual value might be a bit low. Um, but I mean, I, I look. I can't. I'm not going to complain too too much on that. Uh, it's I think higher than what his salary is in the game right now. So I guess it makes sense in context. But anyways, I keep getting distracted. Uh, so guys, here's what to here's what to look for uh, when you're you're sort of reviewing this video. So one, Sony's updated the contract value so that they reflect real life contracts. So all the players. Uh, have that right now. I think for the most part some of the new extensions haven't been added to the game now Last year and years before we learned uh, and I think to Barnes uh, 19 on operation sports did a lot of testing on this over the years Learn when we tried to to put in real life because we can edit contracts when we tried to put in real life contracts and assign them to players it never really worked because it messed up the in-game economy. So if you simmed into the future, there would either be situations where, and, and again, other people can sort of clarify the details of this, but I mean, you would see fewer trades, uh, which is something I'm going to look into with a couple other videos later on when I have some time. Uh, you'd see fewer trades because uh, the players were essentially overvalued compared to what they... They, the game thought they should be. So if you, you gave somebody a real life contract like Albert Pujols, who was like a 76 overall or an 80 overall, his val the value of his contract was you know, 25 million and the game valued him at about 5 million. Um, so you'd either see like weird trades or no trades. In addition to that, when it came to new players coming into the league, uh, those players wouldn't sign realistic deals, so new free agents wouldn't wouldn't adjust to uh, the change in in salary structure. So all the players you might have players getting 30 million, and then as soon as a new 95 overall player becomes a free agent, they would sign for peanuts. That seems to have been addressed. Um, new players are signing for are signing for fairly realistic deals, as you saw from Chris Sale. He's looking for 30 million a year in free agency, which I think is a big step forward. But uh, as you'll see throughout this video, and you've seen already in the first off season, the problem, the, some problems have cropped up. So when they announce the signing of a free agent, I think we might luck out because I'm in the second off season here in the video. When they announce the signing of a free agent, the 
The salary like Jacob deGrom at $20.6 million a year for seven years and $144.4 million deal is what they said he signed. That information is wrong. It's actually the first year, uh, the first year is correct. So James Paxson there is probably getting $16.2 million in his first year. And Brad Hand, Mookie Betts, Mookie Betts, perfect. He's getting $19.7 million in his first year. But if you actually go in and you look at his contract over the length of the deal, it increases because it's backloaded. And if you do the math, and I haven't done the math for all of them, but I've done some examples. If you do the math for Mookie Betts, I'm sure you're going to find that based on the backloaded contract that you see in game uh, on his player card, his backloaded contract is worth more than what the announced value was of his deal on one of these free agent screens. So problem number one is that the, the average values and the yearly total or the, the, the salary contract totals that are being displayed in the off season when players sign are wrong. Number two, uh, which again is something that to Barnes noticed on, uh, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but um, something that to Barnes noticed on, on Operation Sports was that arbitration values for players are a lot lower. Like Blake Snell is a 95 overall player at 28 right now. He's getting a lot more than, than what he was before. The offer, and I've set everything to CPU run for contracts, He's getting offered $8 million in arbitration, but I mean, a guy like that, 95 overall, probably should get, you know, somewhere in the in the neighborhood of 20, 20 million maybe. I forget who it was who signed like a massive arbitration deal this year, but I mean, we've had a couple of those those really enormous uh, arbitration, uh, arbitration uh, offers anyways. Um, so... So that's number two. The second issue there to look for is the arbitration values that players are signing probably haven't adjusted to the new economy or the new in-game economy that is supposed to be reflecting real-life contracts. Um, and I'm trying to think, number three, I mean, hopefully you guys, because this video is so long, you'll have an opportunity to see what else might stick out to you. But uh, let's take a look here at Chris Sale. Chris Sale, you know, if you go back, look at his contract earlier on in the video that was announced. I, I guarantee you it will say a lower uh, yearly value than $24.1 million. And if you add up the entire salary, it will be a lot less. The number that's displayed will be a lot less than what you're seeing on his, his player card screen there, just like Jacob deGrom. Uh, so go back, go forward, move around in the video. Take a look and see, make the comparisons, uh, but see what you guys are finding. Um, you know, I I haven't really gone through and looked at uh, draft picks and that sort of thing to see if they're getting contracts, but I think that issue should be resolved. Like I said, I think players are signing for, it looks like they're signing for real life deals. It looks like players who have had their contracts, who have signed short term contracts, uh, say like a Clayton Kershaw, uh, who come up for free agency before dropping off a cliff in overall, those players seem to be getting uh, contracts that are higher than their, their previous ones. So a guy like Clayton Kershaw, if he's getting $30 million and he comes up for free agency, will probably sign for a three-year deal that's $33 plus million or something in that range. He's not dropping back to 14 or $15 million like he would in previous years. So that issue's addressed. Um, anyways, guys, I, I've probably talked enough. Hopefully I've given you some information for stuff to look at that I've seen. Again, maybe you guys will see some other stuff. I, one thing I've noticed is the progression, and I don't know... I mean, you guys see there's a few 99 overall players here. Mookie Betts is a 99 overall at 28 years old. I mean, not not crazy. I just, I don't know if that's different than the progression from last year. If players are progressing too much and not regressing. I haven't really looked at that, but uh, you guys let me know if you see anything different. Uh, so yeah, I hope this video helps. And uh, yeah, I'll try and post some other stuff uh, as the day goes forward. Thanks guys. And hope you enjoy MLB because it actually, it is a good game. It's too bad that there's, you know, some issues at the beginning of the season in franchise mode, but I, I think it's a lot better than 
I initially thought anyways. I was pretty concerned, but at least some, some stuff has changed for the better. All right, guys, take care.